Welcome back to Sussex Farms for episode 8 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Happy New Year, everybody. New Year, new cold. Isn't it lovely? Um, right, I've just been round uh, going, topping up all the greenhouses. As you can see, my money's gone up significantly. Um, because it got dark around four or five o'clock yesterday, um, I skipped through till today, to late winter. Um, and the greenhouses just kept chugging away. Uh, we, we did all right. Plus, I got rid of that load of... Um, manure at the BGA um, we made about 60 grand on that I think um, so uh, as I've been topping up the uh, greenhouses again I've got a load of water left over they didn't take as much as I thought they were going to um, so I've come to the car wash to sell the remaining water I could take it up and put it into storage um, at the main farm but I think what I'm going to do is we'll sell it see what, what we make now um, as I said uh, in previous episodes We'll just see what we're going to make on this. Um, the concept of uh, that I started off in the workshop just as a trucking company, and I want to go into farming. And as part of buying the, the plot of land that had the workshop on, it meant I had to buy the entire farm, which I wasn't my intention. I didn't want to do that right from the outset. So what I'm going to do with a chunk of this money, some of this money, um, I'm going to buy the farm. You know, that was what I kind of said I was going to do. Blimey, this is... Okay, 26 grand. Um, yeah, I'm going to buy the farm back. I'm going to buy it in stages. So what I'm going to do, first of all, uh, I'm going to buy all the kind of buildings, the outbuildings, the shelters, the storage facility, the silo, uh, where I can store my herbicide, fertiliser, um, seed, all that kind of stuff. So we will have access to all of that. So I could then potentially move all my vehicles over to the main farm and have them in storage and I can start using the farm itself. What I will then do is when we make some more money, I'm going to buy the animal pens and then we'll buy the uh, the farmhouse itself, I think. It will be the, the last thing we kind of decide we're going to buy. I know that's not how it's actually done. And if we actually look at the map, like I said, I think I showed it before. I wanted to start off here, adjust the workshop, but I couldn't buy this plot of land here. This workshop came with all of this and cost about 500,000, I think it was. Uh, 535,000. So like I say, what I'm gonna do is buy it in chunks. So the farmhouse itself, which is here, will be the last thing. The animal pens, yes, I've already got access to them. I know I have, I could use them now without having to do anything at all. But I didn't want that thing of, well, he's just, you know, he's cheated himself the main farm by not doing it properly. You know, and at the end of the day, it's my map. I'm playing it how I want to play it. I could do it any way I want, realistically. But that's what I'm going to do. So a chunk of that will go. Um, and we are in that winter dilemma. Uh, we're in that season's dilemma. The initial excitement, when it's Christmas and you're feeling festive and it's snowing and it feels wintry and you're on seasons because it's new and, oh, I've got snow that's the child's view to snow <laughs> what soon happens is you develop the adult's 
attitude to snow. Not all adults, but some. Where the commute to work becomes a drag and a pain, where the snow becomes annoying, where you're slipping over a lot, where as you get older, you actually, when everyone's excited about snow coming, you start to think, oh, I wish it actually wouldn't because it's a real pain. And unfortunately with seasons, you do get that. You know, initially it's exciting and it is fantastic and I love it. But getting around, getting jobs done and finding things to do becomes difficult. Um, and especially if you're making videos and stuff like that, what, how much can you actually realistically do during the winter? You know, I know you would do repair on your vehicles, you'd probably go around maybe even repairing fences and stuff, providing the ground's not too frozen if you've got to do fence posts and things like that. But you find that's when you do all your repair and your maintenance and your jobs and all the things you've been putting off the rest of the year because you just haven't had the time to do it. So, and obviously on Farming Simulator with Seasons and also with the game, there is forestry. Now, I've done some wood chipping. I did that in the last episode. So I'm going to do some logging. Um, I want to see if we can make a bit more money and we should be able to make a bit more money doing logging so i'm going to lease a logging trailer probably the north modding company one one of the recent ones you'll see it in a little while i'm regretting actually having used the snow plow to clear that bit there snow blower snow plow whatever it was i used because that's going to take a while to clear even when we get into uh, into spring i think um and i'm also going to I'm trying to decide whether to lease or to buy but because we're making money okay the greenhouses are actually doing pretty well I'm not having to chuck in loads of fuel runs. And I've just done a bit of water, but only just one tank load. I haven't done any air yet. Um, I haven't done as many transport jobs as I thought I was going to do. Um, I did a few at the start. I think the piece of equipment I was going to lease, I might actually buy because it will come in handy anyway as part of the farm. I think I'm just, uh, just trying to mull it over. So what I'll do is see you in a little bit. I'll be up at the store to get the trailer for the logging. Um, we kept hold of the least um, Pond's Scorpion King, the MRF edition. We kept hold of that. So we got clobbered a little bit overnight on the leasing costs on that. But in all honesty, like I say, because the greenhouses are making us good money, it really doesn't matter. It's all good. Okay, I'm up at the store. Um, money's gone down. I have made a down payment of about 200,000. Just shy, I mean a tiny fraction shy of 200,000. So we have now got access to the main farm's buildings, storage facility, silo. So what I can start doing, if I do water runs and, f and manure runs for the greenhouses, anything surplus over the top, I can start storing it up there, the water and the manure. It does also mean if we do well on any contracts, any transport jobs, again with the greenhouses, I could then start stockpiling seed, fertiliser, herbicide up there at the farm. Now, I do need to make some money. That's why I'm going to have a go at some logging in this episode, because ready for spring i'm gonna need cultivator i'm probably gonna need a plow i'm gonna need um a cedar um and i'm gonna need what else i'm gonna need uh a herbicide sprayer because i've got weeds on and i'm gonna be doing weeds um so yeah we're gonna need some equipment so what i'm gonna do is lease the trailer for the logging but i'm gonna buy something else it depends, of course, on the thumbnail. As usual, you might already know what that is. It depends what I decide to do. But uh, So, as far as the logging trailer goes, we want forestry. I hope I've got it installed. I'm sure I had it installed. Please tell me you've got it installed. No, you muppet, you haven't got it installed. I could use any one of these, but I just wanted to use the North Modding Company one. Why did I not install that? Okay, right, well... I'll get the other bit and then I'll bear with me and we'll get back and we'll do the other one. Right, I'm back. And we're done. Okay, money's gone down again. I have bought this. I bought the JCB 435 Stage 5. Um, higher horsepower, plus you can have it in red. I've done with doubles because there's snow. I just thought, why not? And I've got the... Is that her hash machine bow? Hang on. I don't want to do the moderate disservice on this one. Uh, where are we? 
yeah, the HA machine and bell. <coughs> the double claw. I'm going to give it another go on this. I have bought um, a bucket to go with the wheel loader as well, but that's going to sit for the time being, so I can't, I'm not doing anything with it yet. And I've leased the PT818, the NMC PT818. So we're going to give that a go. I'm going to take these over to our, well, our hillside. That's what's going to be the trickier bit, is whether or not we're going to be able to get the, uh, the Scorpion King up and down the hills. But we'll do our best. Now this is the one that you can adjust in and out. It leaves the bar out the back, but let's just get some lights on. The light's terrible this time of year, isn't it? Is it L1, R1 and forward on the stick? Side to side, I'm trying to remember what it was now. To bring that forward and back. There we go. L1, and then right stick up and down. So we can bring that backwards and forward. So what we'll do is start cutting the trees down. We'll have a look at the length, see where we're at. And then we can adjust. I'm going to go for a full trailer load. We'll take it and we'll sell it. And hopefully we'll make a bit more money. And then we can start looking at preparing for spring so we'll start looking at buying what machinery and things we need and we'll start storing them at the main farm because we now own part of that a big chunk of that so oh for follow me i do have my new pc my new pc is here i have used it i have tried it all out i've been playing farming simulator on it i haven't done any videos on it i've been downloading mods and getting my head around it very good friend of mine's been helping me looking at editing. Uh, bought me for Christmas. I got an Elgato. Elgato? Elgato. Which means it's like a capture card type thing, but it means I can capture from my PlayStation as well. It will capture from any source. So I can capture from my PlayStation and edit on the PC, which is going to make life so much easier if I do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, I'm, I'm really excited for the, this new year, for 2020. I'm excited to see where the channel goes. I've got some ideas of things I want to do. I'm excited about where uh, the Farming Sim Simulator League is going to go and where it's going. I've had a few chats with Lars um, Lysitan from Giants about his vision for the future of Farming Simulator League. Um, and it's, yeah, it's exciting. And potentially as well this year... Uh, we are in 2020. In November, FS21 should be released. If it follows the usual two-year cycle, so we've gone past the first year of the game being released, that was in November. This November, potentially, the new version of the game comes out. So, an exciting year. I'm looking forward to seeing, like I say, what happens. I'm going to continue doing as much fun stuff as I can and doing mod reviews and enjoying playing the game and trying all the different mods out and you know not all of them but the ones i want to use and the ones that i think will fit what i'm playing um there are going to be new maps there are going to be new mods there's going to be all sorts of cool stuff going on so yeah looking forward to it like i said right from the word go when i first started doing all of this um just ride the wave while it's working while it's all going well while i'm enjoying it ride the wave you don't know how long it's going to last make the most of it do what you can it's probably a good rule for for life really and just get on with it you know right we are here we are kind of set up i'd like to say i don't know how this is going to get up some of these steep hills so i'm going to do some of the closer in ones first i've changed the cut length to 25 meters that might be too long for some of these trees so what we'll do is do the first one, we'll delimit, we'll run it through, and if we've still got the, the pointy end on the end of it, we'll just lop that off with a chainsaw, and we'll just, because I'm pretty sure all these trees on this hillside are about the same height, and then what we'll do is we'll adjust accordingly, let's get that out of the way, and this has got a higher horsepower this one, but I don't know, I think the snow's not helping as well, but... Okay, we're getting there. Get down. What I'll do is I'll bring them down the hill. I'll lay them all down as best I can. And then we'll use the wheel loader to load. So the downside with the wheel loaders for loading up lorries with lumber is the reach isn't always as high as it needs to be to get over the uh, 
quite sure what the technical always to refer to them as times, the side bars. I don't, I'm never quite sure how you're supposed to refer to them, but yeah, you know what I mean. So we'll swing that to one side. My Satec side panel is still working absolutely perfectly on my PlayStation. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. I'm just going to open that and double check. I'm still on 25 meter cut length. I am. So let's run this through and see where we end up. Oh, it just took the end off. Just. Right. Okay, what I need to do... Let's go in. I'll go back round on to put that at 24, I think. That's why there are numbers there on the screen. If I press my PlayStation controller, L1, then all the PlayStation controls come up. It's just like I say, because the side panel is plugged in, it gives me options to do it with either. So if I just repeatedly press 9 on my side panel, I'll get to 24, and then we'll do the next one at 24 metres. So what I'm going to do is lop a little bit off the end of that one. We'll try next one at 24, close that off. From the lobster. That's what I want. Let's take a little bit off there. About that, maybe. Okay. Right, let's go and get another one. See how that pans out. If we get a whole load, we'll load up the trailer. Let's take it and see if we can make a bit of money. Because I think I don't know if people misunderstood what I was talking about in the last episode when I was saying about the wood chipper. That static wood chipper on FS17 always gave you a, a set amount. It didn't matter what the price was for wood chips anywhere. That still chugged out a set amount. It was always fairly good. <coughs> With seasons on, because logging and lumber was seasonal, I was chucking countless amounts to that. People were commenting saying it's because it's wood chips. It, my, my point was not for the FS19 version, I totally understand. Yeah, it's wood chips, I get it. You're never going to make as much money. But the weird anomaly was, on 17, you could. I think at its peak, in the summer, you were only making about a grand per tree if you put it through that wood chipper. In the winter, I'm sure I was making 11, 12 grand a tree. It was ridiculous. I mean, it, you know, that is ridiculous. That's the extreme. But, you know, that all has all changed. Obviously, that has all changed. Right, so hopefully we run this one through. It should lop a little bit more off the end. Now this was always that gamble as well. I did a video a while back, and that was an FS17 as well. It could have changed on 19. Uh, it was about the cut lengths, and weirdly it always says the longer and straighter the pieces, the more money you'll make. And I think I found, a lot of people found, that if you did an entire tree, you didn't make as much money as if you cut them into like eight metre lengths. And I think at one point the, the kind of optimum cut length was seven. Um, and it was a, it was a weird one because it, you know you think well yeah the longer and straighter the better. But obviously the way they taper off at the end, lumber yards don't want the thin bits. They can't cut this into planks or do anything they want with those. So I, I kind of I get it both ways. But just curious to see right how much is this going to take off the end of this? Stop about there. Nope, still didn't do much did it. And it left it left a branch. What? How dare you? Right, okay. I need to adjust that again then. Let's bring it down a little bit more. It could be the trees are a little bit different in length. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll I'll find my, I'll find the right length, we'll chop a few more down, we'll get a pile and start getting them loaded. I'll see you in a bit when we've got some more and then we'll do a little bit of loading and uh let's say see if we can't make a bit of money on this. Okay. I've got some chopped down. I've done some down the bottom here, um, and what I've done, because it was getting quite steep, I've moved up onto the plateau up there, up by Old Man Leonard's cabin. So what I'm going to do is set the truck up the road, up to the top there, to get some more of them. But what I am finding, bearing in mind with seasons on, winter is the best time for doing logging, because there's not a huge amount else you can do. With the snow on the ground, it's getting incredibly laggy. I haven't got many trees cut down, but when they're on the floor, with the snow moving the the wheel loader up to them everything gets laggy and slows down the frame rate drops um as soon as i pick them clear of the ground seem to be fine now as you can probably see at 25 meter lengths or 24s i think i'm down to 23 now they extend way over the back of here um so potentially this truck you'd be looking at maybe 20s 
maybe even like 18s or 19s would give you a, somewhere around here I reckon I'm going to go for a full load like this and we'll just see how it pans out I want to get some on the bottom this way round thick to thin that way first because if you try and put them thin to thick all the weights over this back end here and there's a risk they're going to tip backwards away from you so um, that's what I'm going to do for the, probably the first four once I've got a flat base on the bottom then I can put the next ones on I think I mean that's you know probably the best bet so if I open that up that should drop onto there okay we're on we're not too close to the cab either I didn't want them too close to that end so the next two I'm going to do the same as that thick to thin although they might need a bit of a nudge to get them level uh, what about these two here oh no I've done those see some of them I did one one way one the other just because it made life a little bit easier than when you put them in they're already one way one way you know that it kind of makes sense it makes sense in my head anyway <laughs> oh dear there's no different to when someone has a conversation to themselves and then kind of bring you into a conversation halfway through one they've already had in their heads and they can't understand why you don't know what they're talking about if you're married you'll probably understand those conversations that you don't actually really need to be part of you know the decisions kind of already made <laughs> <laughs> you're just brought in at the end to kind of ratify the whole thing you see what I mean it's not too bad in places but then when you get right back around to the logs it starts to lag a little bit like now frame rate drop I need to come up about two thirds two thirds one third because again all the weights at this end if you try and pick them up right the way in the middle unless you've got one one way and one the other it, they will twist they'll tip because you know the weight is obviously all at one end Bring that in. Right in nice and tight. As soon as I lift those clear of the ground, yes, I don't think I've come far enough actually. I think they're caught underneath those other ones, aren't they? There we go. I thought that's weird. It should be working fine. That's probably way too high to have them at this point, but let's drop them down a little bit. I'll be glad when we get out of winter. I know it's that kind of, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Because the lighting isn't so great, because the sun doesn't get very high in the sky, so it's difficult unless you kind of come round to the right. And that's the, the, the brilliance of FS19 and the lighting dynamics now. I think I've mentioned it before. It's like when you're doing proper photography. You know, if you've got the light in front of you like that, everything behind it is dark. You can't really see. Swing round with the light behind you, I sat you know, whichever way around, and all of a sudden you get you know you get better lighting on the subject, so to speak. But it can be a bit of a pain when you're trying to do stuff from different angles. But right, so now I've got four that way, pretty much on a flat bed. Let's give that a nudge. Do they over extend a little bit? Yeah. So what I can do now is I can put some the other way so the whole load doesn't become unbalanced. I mean, if you've done logging before, you'll get this. You totally understand what I'm talking about. You might be new to doing this and you might not have done it and the game physics and that kind of thing. But obviously being thick to thin, if you keep piling them up that way, thick to thin, all the thick is at this end and then they'll all start to lean down at an angle because the thin's at that end. So what you've got to then do is every now and again, you've got to do thick this end and thin that end to balance the load. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm sure, yeah, that'd be alright. So now I can do some the other way around, thick to thin that way, and we can then gradually kind of work our way up, hopefully keeping the load level as we go. But what I might do, the strap's on there, isn't it? I might put a strap on there, I'll put the strap there. We'll put it on for each one, just to stop it shifting. Then we'll put the next load, I could probably get another one in there but anyway so I'll say, I'm going to carry on we'll go side to side then what I've got to do is move this whole operation hopefully up the hill I've got some trees cut down up there because there's a plateau up there 
it's much easier for cutting the trees down and you know whether I can get the truck in though that's a whole different ball game we shall see Right, so as you've seen, I'm up on the top of the hill. I'm up on the, it's kind of a plateau at the end of the day. It's flatter than it is further off. Um, I've loaded up, I think, as much as I'm going to do. I could probably get some more in there. I've got a bit of room there. I could put a couple of larger ones, maybe a bit on the top. I'm just worried about overloading it too much because it's already tipping a bit on the, on the turn. I did have to um, bring up a bucket which I've taken back down because if you remember when I did the episode where I was bringing up the uh, wood for Leonard um, I put all the snow around there the bank around the side and I couldn't get through with the truck so I had to clear the snow here so I could get through with the truck so that's now done um, and I think we'll, t we'll take it down and sell it what I did do as well I widened the um, claws I had them on the narrow setting and if you widen them um, I think it's L1 and stick, I can't remember what, what the control is now. You widen it, it just gives you a much more stable platform for, for loading your logs. So what we'll do, I'm just thinking actually, I think I bought these claws and if I don't do much more logging that's not going to be cost effective. But it's, it's at the end of the day, it's all good. I'm going to keep the scorpion out here for the time being, simply because if I take this load and I make good money on it I might off screen do a bit more up here and as we drive down I'll also show you down the bottom of the hill we own the bit of land 
Let's start that. Like I say, I've got a bit of room. I think I could probably get some more on here, but I'm just worried about it getting a bit, it might tip and getting a bit heavy. We are still getting a little bit of lag here and there. Not horrendous, and I'm going to have to be really careful here. No different to when I've been off road with my brother. Don't hit the brakes going down here. <laughs> Just keep it in a low gear. Bit of engine braking. Yeah, it's gone laggy. Oh, that's so annoying. I've never experienced it with logging before. Every now and again, if you do too many small logs, bales, absolutely, it does it. But I suppose because they're full length, it's struggling a little bit to cope. I don't know. That's, that's quite frustrating now, because that's annoying me. Oh uh, yeah, the trees down here on the right-hand side, we own all this as well. So it's flatter down here as well, obviously. So we could do a little bit down here. And the bit I cleared the other day, when we bought our Christmas tree and we did the wood chipping, that's better, that seems to have cleared itself. That's weird, I don't know why I did that. Um, I think we might put an orchard on there because it's a nice spot and there's some hedges around there that belong to other people's sort of the boundaries to their fields so I think we might do a, might do a little orchard there I haven't quite decided I also cleared this bit here because it was tricky to get through with the truck so I thought well you know what it just makes sense if I've got the uh, the bucket here we'll deal with it so we're going to take this full load then over to the uh, sawmill. Hopefully I don't get bogged down in the snow, he says. And then, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. I've got my lights on. Wow. Doesn't seem to be making much difference. We'll see what we get. I'm hoping it's okay. I don't want to start getting into the, you know, testing it on every different length in each metre down to I get the most productive I just want to sell some logs <laughs> I don't want it to be too complicated so I just want to sell some logs I want to make some money uh, Stu, I will see you over there in a minute yeah, this bit here, behind where the, the hedge is, where we first started I've left the other trees there but I'm just thinking it might be nice to put a few trees on there we're not too far away from our workshop you can see that off in the distance I'll be honest with you, it's been difficult <laughs> because while I've been trying to cut the trees down and pick them up with the loader, the, the lag, the frame rate drop has been awful and it's been really, really difficult. I normally really, really enjoy doing logging. It's one of those things, every time I do it, I just enjoy it. I find it quite therapeutic. It's not always for other people therapeutic to watch, but <laughs> I tend to find it. But it's actually been quite irritating this time. And that'll be just the combination of the longer logs, the modded trailer, the snow, you know, all those things combined. Well, <laughs> to say this was a game getting here, blimey. I don't know if it's because the snow's not fresh. I got stuck more times this time than any other trip I've done. I hope it was worth it. <laughs> I hope I do all right on these logs. Oh dear. What a palaver. I'll be honest with you, I've... I've... <laughs> I may have lost my temper a couple of times. What I did initially was came along uh, the back road, round past the farm, through the tunnel and past the livestock market, which was all fine. Until I got to the bit where it raised up a little bit round the back there, where it used to be rocky. And I got stuck. And it didn't matter which way I came at it, I kept getting it slowed down to zero, then the wheels would spin, couldn't do anything. So I backed up and I thought what I'll do is come down this incline here and come down the back of the sawmill along the back of there and then come round to the front there. The first time I tried it, I came down. Oh, I can't get through there. Uh, came down and um, the whole trailer tipped up against this wall and the tines on the trailer were at an angle caught up on these posts oh I was so angry oh, <laughs> it was my own fault I was trying to trying to get myself through and save myself some time but uh well, it took ages to get that out ok I couldn't reset the trailer because if you reset the trailer it leaves the logs behind so I had to try and get it out I really hope this was worth it am I going to be absolutely gutted let's see shall we
Is that all? 34 grand? For all of that? I thought lumber was supposed to be worth a bob in the winter. I, you know... That's so weird. The trouble is now my OCD is thinking, right, I need to do a load where maybe I split that in half and I do 12 and 12 or, you know, 12 and 13s and bring the same amount of lumber but split down and see if I make more money that way. But I know I'm going to be doing this all day if I do that. Well... <sighs> don't know what to do now. Whether we'll to do some more and try that as an option. If I do, I'm going to do it off screen. And what I might do is the start of the next episode, there might just be a little bit of a... You know, just showing me unloading it or something, I don't know, maybe. But that was fun and games. I need to get rid of the snow. I really do. Is that oriented strand board? It is, look. Oranges. I need some of this for a man cave build. I need loads of it actually, but it's expensive to buy it brand new. I need to find some of that sells off cuts and stuff like that. Sorry. So I trust I thought <laughs> it's because I'm looking for it all over the place. As I'm driving around places, you know, people have skips and stuff and all over the place and off cuts and bits of wood and you're always on the eye for, you know, can you find something a little bit cheaper than buying it from the local DIY store? Anyway. That being said, I think Oh, I've come to the end of this episode. What I'll probably do is skip forward. We need early spring. I need to start thinking about fields and that kind of thing. Obviously, we'll have more money again because the, the uh, greenhouses will continue to make us money. Um, and uh, what I might do, like I say, I might do another load of lumber. I might get a different trailer if I do. Or I might just shorten this one down and put the shorter logs on. I haven't decided yet, but I'll probably do that so we'll have a bit more money and hopefully some of this snow will be gone unless we have a particularly cold early spring and we have more snow and if we do I think I might just uh, curl up somewhere and wait for summer but anyway I hope you've enjoyed the episode if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching